AutoCoin Academy back with another episode. I was just cleaning up the garage and I found this old sign I used to have when I would detail cars. Thought I'd show that. Here we have the intake manifold. We got the fiberglass all set. It's all dried up. Things are looking good. And I'm just now peeling back some of the tape behind the fiberglass. In this episode, we will be talking about oxygen sensors and how they play a role in the exhaust system. What they do is they measure the amount of oxygen levels in the exhaust and they send that information to the computer and the computer will adjust the air and fuel mixture accordingly. Here in this photo, we have the stock exhaust headers off the BMW S54. I have highlighted in red circles where the oxygen sensors get bolted onto. However, in my case, I have cut off the cats, so we will just be installing the oxygen sensors on the top two circles. Over to the workbench and take a look at what is inside the boxes here. I'm just going to remove this piece of metal that is stuck onto the table because of the epoxy. Opening up the box here, we're going to take the oxygen sensor out. Important to get the correct oxygen sensor as they all are different. And more often than not, each vehicle is going to have more than one oxygen sensor. The two oxygen sensors we have here are for the upstream, which is before the catalytic converter and it is what we need to get the engine started. We do not need the downstream necessarily. You can see on the box here that is advertised for better fuel economy, better engine performance. Again, all relating to measuring the amount of oxygen in the exhaust gases. You can see here that there is a crush washer it's important that you install the oxygen sensor with the crush washer and also the cable has four wires to it and it is attached to a plug on the other end. This plug is yellow, the other one was green. All the plugs on this engine are different and if I take this cap off, you can see the silver anti-seize. Anti-seize is used as a lubricant to prevent rust and corrosion. Here on the back, we have four wires, two for heater, one for signal, and the other for ground. Comparing the two oxygen sensors, now we see a diagram of the oxygen sensors and Again, we have removed the downstream oxygen sensor for our build. Applying anti-seize right now onto the threads because for some reason this one had it and the other one did not. This is what the anti-seize lubricant is. We are using a copper base. This is what was included in the box. Now I will show you how to apply the copper anti-seize lubricant. We place it on the threads and you do not need too much. Again, this is just to make removal of the sensor in the future more easier. Let me apply the last little bit and I will now focus the camera so you can get a little bit of a closer look on how that is. Also, on the end of this oxygen sensor, the band is green. The other one is yellow. You may have noticed that there is a wire that you cannot detach from the sensor. In order to install, there is this socket here called an oxygen sensor socket. It is unique because it has a slot to slip over the wire and allow you to tighten the oxygen sensor with a ratchet. This particular socket accepts a half inch drive ratchet.
Now we are going to install the oxygen sensor. The only tricky thing with this oxygen sensor is you have to allow the wire to spin freely or else it's just going to spin back in place. And on the top of the engine you can see where the end of the oxygen sensor gets plugged into. Now I'd like to take the time to talk about the cooling system. We have to sort out the upper and lower radiator hose. I'll be cutting out from this 90 degree pipe. I will be using the same part number for both the upper and lower radiator hoses. It's a little bit tight with the radiator in so just be careful not to damage the radiator when in doing so. I have cut one side of this pipe and I am just mocking it in to see how much of the other side I will need to cut. And we will be using hose clamps to tighten these in place. Please see video number two on hose clamps. I would like to thank you for watching this video and to our subscribers on our YouTube channel. And for more resources such as worksheets to go along with these videos, the link for that is in the description. And for our next video, we will be talking about fuel systems.